Hi everyone, we've not made a really muddy video in a while, but I know people love these, so here we go. Keep in mind, this water may look dirty, but most of these places you still have to hold on to something because of the strong current, and this is dry season. In rainy season, this water is a good 10 meters deeper and also a little bit more clear. So today I want to have a look at the giant pike cichlids, now genus Lugubria, named after Crinicicla lugubris, formerly known as the lugubris group. The place we are looking at today is the Amazon lowland, somewhere between the mouth of the Rio Trombetas and the mouth of the Rio Tapajos on the other southern side. This kind of detail is not that important because in the Amazon floodplain, in the lowland, all these places look very similar. This region is full of lakes and in the dry season they are low and have a narrow channel connecting them to the main Amazon. But in the rainy season their banks are at least on one side totally flooded and they just look like they are part of the main branch of the Amazon. The water flow here comes from small channels that bring water from terra firma, the upland, and that water continuously flows into the lakes. We made a video of what this all looks like in the dry versus the rainy season to show how discus breed in nature. You can check that out from the links you see here or in the description. Please share this video and give it a like and subscribe to this channel. In the dry season, this is a snorkel situation. The deepest water I'm filming in is around 180 centimeters or 6 feet, so I can still stand in most places. The central channel has enough current to blow this fine debris off the substrate and exposes white sand. Some places in the Amazon lowland also have muddier substrates with some clay, but those would be impossible to film in. The visibility is just too low. So let's dive into the central channel and have a look at the fish community. In around chest deep water, the first fish is a Leparinus, as in so many places. I've been walking around and that has stirred the bottom and these guys are often the first to show up. But this video is about Lugubria. And here we go, Johanna and Marmorata and Lugubris. In the first seconds, three species. Pike cichlids often share space like this and it's not that unusual to see several species in the same river but it's really nice to get all three species in the same frame. The debris on the substrate is particles and branches brought down from terra firma forest by the current, and a lot of this decaying matter is reeds from the floating meadows that are choked out by the top layer and then die off and sink to the bottom. So here's a tree stump, which affords fish some cover from the bigger predators, and there are Johanna, Marmorata, Lugubris, some Heros Ephasiatus, Discus, and Lemolita, all together huddled around this small tree stump. You will maybe also catch a tail of Brucon Melanopterus as we approach the riverbank under the floating reeds. That is a lot of fish, so who are the predators? We saw some big Arapaima in a boat of the fishermen, Arowana, electric eels, really big peacock bass, likely Cicla terurus, lots of various piranhas, but also we saw many herons, kingfishers, some otters, caiman, and dolphins. All of them would eat any of these cichlids if they were given a chance. There are lots of large pike cichlids here, often many adults together in groups of 40 or more fish. I mentioned piranhas, and you can see that these Sarasama scapularis are here in numbers, and also in breeding coloration. Their nests are upstream, or in the river bank in shallower water. The males actually get red bellies at this time of the year. You'll also notice Satanoperca. For them, this sort of habitat and messy substrate is ideal. I also saw triangle cichlids, Uaro amphia cantoides, and Geophagus altifrons, but they are too shy to get caught on camera. And when water like this, I usually wear a shirt, because I think the fish are nervous when they see my bright white forearms, but also because mosquito and horsefly bites make little scabs, and small tetras like Munchausia love pulling those off. When there are this many piranhas around, I'm always nervous that they would do that also, but I have never had it happen. Notice that the Heros Ephasiatus here are really beautiful, with blue lines, same as the discus. That nice blue coloration is unique to this sector of the Amazon. I found that those caught in Peru or upstream in the Brazilian shield rivers are much less brightly colored. Looking up, really close to the surface, we find our first smaller fish. 
looks like a small school of Munkhausia that are quite likely worried about the situation of swimming alongside several hundred pike cichlids. These marmorata are in breeding color, and unlike many other cichlids, I think they breed year-round. Something that is truly special about these big pikes is that their young, or at least some young, stay with mom until she's ready to breed again. That can be a year later, when they're already 20 centimeters or around 8 inches long. I don't know if there's another fish species where that would be the case. Maybe in colony breeding species like some Neolamprologus from Lake Tanganyika. But this is quite unique and strange to observe. Many of these nearly adult pikes are still following mom around. But then here we go with yet another predator, a school of barracuda. Looks like this is Acestorhynchus microlepis. The female marmorata and lugubris have the white dorsal fin, especially when they are ready to breed. The Johanna females have just a red dorsal. Looks like this marmorata female is guarding some fry. Likely, they are hidden deep in the reeds behind her, but she's not moving along with the huge group. So that is a good indication that she has other responsibilities. We'll leave her be, since they have a population of hundreds to uphold. Mamarata is the dominant species of Lugubria here, and if you ever kept these fish, you know it is moderately aggressive for such a large fish, which also means that a bunch of large adults can coexist during this low water season without constantly fighting each other. Here's a pair of Hypsilicara temporalis, the chocolate cichlid. They are waiting for the rains and rise in water levels, just like the discus and the heros, and they will travel out into the flood zone and breed in the first months of the year. I spent a lot of time searching here to see if I can catch the marmorata with eggs or fry, and kept the camera running just in case something special or large decides to bump into me. These moments are usually super quick, and there is no time to get the camera running. In this visibility, you notice things very late. There are no rocks here, and the only solid objects are pieces of wood or sunken trees. Along the edge of the lake, in around one meter or just three feet, I finally hit the jackpot. There's just one single branch here, not as thick as my forearm, and a pair of mamarata is guarding eggs underneath. This female won't move until I'm almost touching the branch. You can nicely see the eggs suspended from their poles under the wood. Behind the branch, they have hollowed out the riverbank, and it's likely that the hatched free-swimming fry will start their first days feeding in that spot. The male has backed off, circling me at the edge of visibility, maybe arm's length or so. They are a lot less brave than the females. I got too close and pushed her out of the nest. That can happen because the current is quite strong here and I have to raise my head occasionally because there are some larger boats in the channel. You can see she swam out, greeted the male, approached the nest, and was right back in the position less than 30 seconds later. They will raise a nice clutch of new marble pike cichlids this year. One more predator for the list in this video. This is a wolffish in really shallow water. It is Hoplias malabaricus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel.